guys, it's Melanie and welcome back to Living Luxuriously for Less, where we celebrate, decorate, and enjoy everyday life for less. Well, in today's video, I want to share with you guys 10 ways that you can save money on your wedding. So here is the venue that my clients chose. I wanted to show you guys what the room looked like before, and then I will share with you what the room looked like after, along with some money saving tips. So let's get started. So tip number one is to have your wedding and your reception in the same room. By doing this, the guests are already seated, they're already in place, and you don't have to worry about the stress of the logistics of the wedding, driving 10 to 20 minutes from one location to the next, losing some of your guests, thus losing money on food that you've paid for to be catered. So having your wedding and reception in the same space not only saves money in terms of the logistics or the room, it also saves money in terms of decor because all of your decor is pretty much double duty at this point, which was another tip that I will talk with you guys about a little later on. Now, this was a boho chic themed wedding. Uh, my bride uh, was marrying, her husband was African and she wanted to kind of infuse both of their cultures and I thought this was the perfect way to do it. And we absolutely love, love, love the way that it all came together. So let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two is to make wise investments or put your money where it matters the most. A lot of times, you know, a huge aspect of the budget or a huge portion of the budget is taken uh, with flowers and food. And so with my bride, um, we wanted to really maximize the budget that they had provided, which was a very reasonable budget. Um, and so when I talk about, you know, these tips, it's not about being cheap or your event looking cheap. It's about how to best maximize the budget that you have and still have that lux for less look that you desire. And so one of those things for us was we did not like the chairs that the venue provided. And so with that being said, we knew that the chairs would make a huge impact in the overall room. And so that is definitely one of the first places that she wanted to um, make that very wise investment in changing out the seating because the seating in your room will make a huge, huge impact. I promise you no one will remember the flowers if your chairs are uncomfortable. Um, and so this was where she wanted to make that impact and it turned out absolutely amazing. So our next tip is to infuse double duty decor whenever and wherever possible. So as you guys can see, the stage was completely set up for the wedding ceremony, whereas the actual rest of the room was set up for the reception. And so the guests were actually seated in the same seats that they would already be seated in for their reception. And for the backdrop, you know, it served as a beautiful, beautiful backdrop for the ceremony. And then we added the uh, sweetheart table in front of the circular backdrop, which I will link down below, which gave her double duty decor. And it just made for beautiful, you know, photos of the wedding. Um, I added in like custom lanterns and things to bring in that boho chic look. But this is also decor that I could take and use in other events. Um, it is also decor that I could actually use in my home. So pretty much everything that you see uh, here is double duty from the pompous grass and the, and the uh, baskets. Those are double duty. Of course, you know, the round circle I use a lot for wedding ceremonies. You can add balloons on it. You can do so many different things with it, which will not only benefit you and your business, but it also benefits your clients because these can, things can be used time and time again. And so, yes, having and infusing that double duty decor, whether you are taking the same arch that was used for your wedding ceremony and using it for the backdrop for your reception, um, whether you're taking the flowers that were used down the aisle for your wedding ceremony and placing them 
on the tables um, for the reception. All of that helps to save time and money. But let me say this, if you decide to use the florals um, for your wedding ceremony and also use it for your reception, make sure that they're flowers that are <laughs> Uh, climate friendly you don't want them looking dead like you know being able to reuse hydrangeas that was used outside for a summer wedding in Alabama may not be as feasible so make sure you select flowers that will thrive in various temperatures and make sure you have someone in place that will be able to move those things and finally make sure that those things are movable and one of the other ways that we were able to kind of cut costs is we gave this big massive look on the tables you guys remember me I've shared these on Amazon time and time and time again um, the the square metal boxes and we placed smaller centerpieces on the inside of them but because this was a huge room the centerpiece in and of itself would have gotten lost in the space. But because we added those metal boxes that were 31 and a half inches tall um, and placed that centerpiece on the inside, it actually elevated that centerpiece and gave it the appearance of a taller, more massive centerpiece. And it was very compatible with the other large centerpieces and large structures that were in the room. So that brings us to our next tip. And so tip number four is to DIY when it makes sense and saves major sense, if you know what I mean. Now, some DIYs, um, they don't save time, nor do they save money. And I cringe when I see people go to the Dollar Tree and purchase $30 worth of materials to make those outrageous looking some of them look good but some, for the most part you can tell that they are those Dollar Tree candlesticks or vases that are stacked on top of each other and quite honestly you can buy a very very nice dupe or a very very nice uh, you know centerpiece for a fraction of the price that you spent doing the DIY. Now, if you love that look, go for it. I'm, I'm not knocking anyone, but if you definitely want that luxury look for less, then, you know, kind of vet out the DIY pro, uh, projects that you do for your wedding. Not only is it stressful, a lot of times it doesn't really save you all that much money and it costs you a lot more in time. Um, in resources and the list goes on. So for this particular amazing centerpiece, I saw this dupe of this uh, floral uh, holder online, the centerpiece online, and it was like $300. I was like, mm -mm, that is not something I'm willing to invest in. And so I went to eFavor Mart. I found them a, a pack of four for, you know, a bit, like $60, $70 spray painted them and no one ever knew that it was a white plastic urn. It looks absolutely amazing on the table. I also paired it with some gorgeous trending centerpieces um, that I've seen like major designers use. I found them also on, I found them on Amazon for a fraction of the price. So I will list both of those down below. I do know that they're on sale right now on Amazon, but I don't know how long it will last, but I will definitely look to, uh, lift, uh, list both of them down in the description box below. You guys be sure to check them out and grab them because I shared them back in January and they are just now coming back in stock. So definitely check them out. And let me pause and just brag on my Lux Academy students, you guys. They came in, they were ready to get the work done. They designed fresh florals, they designed um, faux florals, they designed the centerpiece that you see before you just using what we had on hand in order to really come up with something unique and I am so very proud of them. So definitely just let them know down in the comments that you are proud of the work that they did. I mean, they just did an incredible job over the two days, three days that we spent together. They did two different events at two different locations and then we finished up with the bridal show and I taught them how to market their businesses in real life by attending a bridal show. And I will show that to you guys at the end of this video. If you are interested in becoming a Lux Academy student, definitely um, 
check us out at luxacademy.online. I would love to have you as either an online student or an in-person student. We offer both types of classes. The online classes are self-paced. The in-person classes are taught at least once a quarter. So definitely check us out at luxacademy.online. And I will also leave that information down in the description box as well. Once you successfully complete the program, you will get or you will earn a certification. Most of the people that have taken my classes understand that I don't give certificates. You earn them. Once you purchase the information, it is yours to keep. But when it, when it comes down to certification, I'm serious about the work that you have to put in. And so it is definitely something that you earn and it's not handed out. But I promise you when you finish it, you have everything that you need from contracts to contacts to, you know, the culture, to my inventory shopping list secrets, everything that I have to run my business, you have access to all of those things. So definitely check us out at lexacademy.online. Now let's move on to our next tip. Tip number five is to alleviate paper. So clearly I had menu cards in the beginning of this video and that was purely for uh, some marketing that I was doing at a bridal show. For the actual events, I have been alleviating as much paper as possible. Um, not only does it save money, it also tr saves trees, which saves the earth. Um, if you have to use paper, I would recommend just having it at your head table or your bridal party table for photo purposes only. But what we are doing now, and a lot of my brides are doing now, is creating like large signs that will kind of detail their event on a mirror or something of that nature so that the guests can see the flow for the afternoon or the itinerary for the wedding and the reception. It also includes the menu, etc. But what has been a super huge hit has been QR codes. So the bride and groom would have a beautiful picture of themselves with a QR code on it and the wedding guests can scan that code and that code would reveal you know kind of the schedule of events for the for the day and it would also include things like the menu the wedding website and whatever information the couple wanted to convey to their guests so definitely QR codes are the way to go and they are so efficient so tip number six is to reduce your guest count. This is really probably the most effective way to reduce your budget. Um, if I had to say I had one regret from my wedding day, I would say that regret would have been the number of guests that I invited. My husband and I um, threw away so much, or we could have potentially thrown away a lot of food. Let me correct that. Um, I have a huge family, so we did not have a lot of children at our reception. However, they were staying at a hotel that was literally right across the street um, from the venue, or they were physically, it was basically the same property. So we were able to go and get those kids that were not initially able to attend the reception, mainly because of costs, and they were able to you know, consume that food. We were able to take that, you know, they were able to eat that food and we weren't, we didn't lose the money technically, but we could have lost literally thousands of dollars. So reduce that guest list, go over it time and time and time again. If you have not spoken to those people um, within a year, it's probably safe to say that they don't need to be on the guest list for your wedding. So, um, and it's not a mean thing. I think that weddings are very intimate. And reducing the guest list will allow you to keep that intimacy and to also maintain the budget that you have in mind for your big day. So my next tip is to select a venue, if possible, that will allow outside catering. Many times, you know, the benefit of having your wedding at a large venue or a larger hotel is that, you know, catering and everything is right there on site but there are a lot of additional charges that come along with that that will definitely make your catering bills skyrocket um, between just the cost per person and service charges you could definitely be looking at a five-figure budget for food and so one of the ways 
that I like to kind of alleviate that is to select venues that either have more reasonable catering options or that will allow you to bring caterers in from the outside. Now, while we're talking about caterers, let me give you guys another tip. And that is when tasting food from a baker or a caterer, I typically like to pick up those samples on the day that they're already cooking for a larger group. So if you're gonna get a cake sample from a baker, then wait till they're baking a wedding cake and get some of the, the cake from that batter. Um, if you are getting a sample of food from a caterer, then wait till they're catering a event that is on the same scale as yours and ask for a sample from that. If it's a restaurant, just go in and blindly taste the items that you're considering uh, for your wedding or for your event from that menu. I have learned just through my professional experience as a food scientist for the past you know, 15 years and also just in my personal experience and professional experiencing wedding uh, design and wedding planning is that you know when they create batches for smaller you know tastings there's going to be a huge difference in or it could, could possibly be a huge difference when that menu is scaled up so definitely do your due diligence do your research and check it out now this next tip is going to be a little bit controversial you can let me know how you feel about it in a chat but i'm just going to give my opinion on it nevertheless but i feel like the better the, you get better bang for your buck when you do your photos before the wedding it gives the photographer time to really set up those creative shots you can get photos of the room before people are in the room sitting down the kids are you know they're more prone to be um, just more attentive in the beginning to get those shots so that's just my personal opinion get all the photos you can get before the wedding if you still want to have that moment between you and your groom then I would just recommend getting every picture you can before the wedding and then going um, from there and getting the pictures of you know the pictures that you couldn't get with your groom if you just have to have that moment but before the wedding is definitely the way to go. And it saves you tons of money from paying extra hours and not having the photographer um, get the photos beforehand. Our ninth tip is to understand that luxury is an experience. Now, this gorgeous floral wall from Rose Morning definitely set the pace in terms of creating that luxury uh, feel as soon as the guests came in. It was super easy to put together. It comes in four pieces now. You can use it as a runner. You can use it as a topper on a backdrop or you can use it as an eight by eight backdrop. They come in four zippered parts now. And when I tell you guys, it was just absolutely beautiful. It fit the theme beautifully. If you are in love with all of those more neutral colors this would be perfect for someone that has a neutral wedding or an event it would be perfect for a fashion blogger just it is just gorgeous in and of itself and it sets the perfect pace for your guests when they're waiting to um, during a cocktail hour or as they're entering into a wedding it's the perfect time for them to grab those photos and just really you know enjoy that moment capturing those memories and it just really lets them know that you thought about them when you were doing the wedding planning process the next part is also you know for the event itself you want to make it fun you want to make it interactive you want to make it memorable and it definitely sets the pace for your entire night and my tenth and final tip is to trust your designer and planner they you picked them out for a reason you were attracted to them for a reason and the more you put your trust in them I promise you you'll get more bang for your buck they're gonna be more willing to go over and beyond when you are not micromanaging every single detail and cutting off their creativity. Daniel and Sierra were like more than astonished with the way that everything turned out. And I think that the number one reason that things turned out so well and in their favor was, you know, simply the trust and respect that they had for me and for the expertise that I brought to the table. So trust your designer and planner and hire them first. You heard it here. 
you guys have enjoyed this content and you found it helpful, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and turning on your notification bell so that you will be aware when I release new content. I love to teach and to share and to just add value to your time if you're taking time out to watch my channel. It's so many different places that you could be here on YouTube and I am so, so, so fortunate and so blessed to have you here. So I would like to end by sharing, you know, another way that you can kind of repurpose decor, like once your wedding is over and you've used live florals and things of that nature, um, I would love to just offer you a few suggestions in terms of what to do with that. So you could create smaller centerpieces and give those to your guests. Um, you can also donate them to battered women's shelters, hospitals, nursing homes, and the list goes on. I just hate to see live flowers placed into the trash. I typically design an alomi dish or some type of container when they're live that the guests can easily take with them and enjoy. Um, also, as a designer, you could also talk to your bride and if they're going not going to use the florals, you can probably, if there's a wedding show or something coming up the next day, you can use those centerpieces for that, which is what I did. I only needed one and so you can use those centerpieces for that. Um, it turned out absolutely amazing. I did elevate the table just a little bit by adding in the gold goblets, of course, the beautiful napkin rings from totallydazzled.com. I also use the beautiful table number here. I got those acrylic table numbers, acrylic stands from Amazon. I will link those down below as well. And I hung my sign on the little pole there along with my website and it just turned out great the lux academy students were able to see you know how to set up for a bridal show or bridal event how to market their business and it was just a pleasure for them to be able to participate and it all worked out right there together again those gold stands are also from amazon you guys they are absolutely beautiful and you can find it all in the description box below so thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know your favorite tips down in the comments below. I will see you guys at the next one. Until next time, it's Melanie with Living Luxuriously for Less. Cheers.